Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cobb, and the eternal question yet remains unanswered. Do Acolytes actually effectively counter enemy sledgehammers? We can do a little bit of a breakdown of that in this here game. First round about to kick off against this guy's pretty damn aggressive uh, sledgehammer crawler rush strat. And it just turns out that he really, really side loads. And ah, I spread my guys out. I even have my extra unit of fangs over here on this side, which is just so not ideal. It's ridiculous. So yeah, we clean house over here. Over here though, we have this unstoppable horde <laughs> of sledgehammers just rushing all my dudes down. Um, yeah, feels really, really bad. Now, because we're starting off with Acolytes and he has crawlers, I'm thinking to myself, okay, yeah, I'm gonna need to buy like a recall beacon here, a field recovery beacon, and start to recall some units over here, start to sell some guys off and shift over to the side a little bit more. And I'd like to be doing that with Arclights, if I can, seeing as though he is already starting off with crawlers. Um, yeah, Acolytes seem like the logical option. Now, the thing is, sledgehammers tend to kind of annihilate Arclights early on, early on specifically, right? It's not up until like round six, seven, once you've got a bunch of levels on your Acolyte units, and then you can give them like range and charge shot for the ridiculous amount of bonus attack damage, that they can start to really contend with the sledgehammers. The trick is not dying <laughs> before that happens, right? Um, because, yeah, you can be like, my acolytes are eventually going to deal with this guy's sledgies, just you wait. And then you die by round five because you have no effective way of uh, stopping these sledgies. That's why I went ahead and picked up subsidized Stormcaller here. I load up a little bit on the Stormies. I'm thinking, okay, is this enough? We very, very kind of supply capped in the early game as to how we can actually react to this. This dude invests into range already, which I'm about to see as soon as the round begins, of course. And so that tells me that he's pretty damn committed to these sledges, right? They're not going anywhere. He may even be building more in the future. So, yeah, you see your opponent by tech like this. You gotta start countering that unit um, quite early on. Because obviously they're going to invest a lot of crap in it. Now, yeah, the issue we have over here is that I'm trying to buy Arclites, trying to buy stone callers to deal with the sledges, but the crawlers are just coming in and just wrecking us, and, and the fangs that are making up the chaff at the front, they're just kind of owning the hell out of me. Um, and it's always just a little bit of an uphill battle, I guess, to recover against these super aggressive openers. And so, we just get annihilated all over again. Let's put a stress as well. This guy's placing nothing at all on his, uh, on, like, uh, the right side over there. Which I'm paying attention to as well. I'm thinking, okay, can I eventually flank this? Um, is this something that I can maybe exploit in future rounds? Surely he's gonna place a unit of crawlers or something here eventually to cover that. Maybe drop a missile or something. It's something I've got my eye on, though, you know what I'm saying? Similar thing on my side, I don't want to leave myself too exposed over here to just giving him sort of like a free round win. Um, as you can see, we pick up the incendiary bomb, just trying to desperately salvage something approaching a round win here, especially because all the sledges are getting levels as well. And Oh my god, bro, so yeah, I dropped the incendiary bomb here so that he can't barrier against this. Because um, yeah, you can only place his barriers like here, so that looks like it's going to work out. And now you see that I finally go into the Phoenixes. So, yeah. If you're looking to play Acolytes into Sledgehammers, you can't rely on the Arkies in the early game to get the job done, obviously. They're just not going to be able to take out uh, these Sledgehammers. They're just way, way too tanky. They need like a plethora, sometimes like three upgrades to be able to effectively deal with the Sledges. Once they have these uh, bunch of upgrades though on the Acolytes, they will decimate Sledgehammers. Like, it's a night and day difference how hard Arclights can skill compared to Sledgies. But until then, I'm going to rely on Phoenixes to take care of these guys. Now, I actually just want to slow this down a little bit and talk about the Phoenix choice uh, a little bit as well. Because I think that that's quite important. Why did I opt for Phoenixes and not Maxmen? Um, the primary reason for that is I actually want this guy to be building Mustangs. I actually really, really want to be building Mustangs. Just turns out he actually did build some Mustangs, which just died in the fire over here on this round uh, anyway. So perhaps I didn't need to opt for the Phoenixes for that reason, because uh, he's already going into Stangs. But if I can just kind of bait him into building more Mustangs early on to kill off Phoenixes, there's like pretty much no better counter in the game, right, to Phoenixes than Stangs. So if I can do that, if I can bait this guy into building more and more Stangs, those are going to feed experience to my Acolytes, right? Acolytes do extremely, extremely well into uh, Mustangs. 
pretty much all the way through the game, you know? So yeah, that's the thought process between, uh, behind going Phoenixes and not Maxmen. I believe here I actually go for Lightning Storm in the end. The justification for this is simply that I need to hold on, right? I'm just trying to buy time for myself right now. That's 350 supply. It should, it should keep us alive decently for another round, you know? Um, and I'm just using this time to kind of build more nerds. And it's actually during this round that I go ahead and I slam some happy little stone callers up here, man. Oh god, I actually missed this last round. I totally I totally missed covering this last round. Um, I totally forgot I did that, actually. On that round three, I actually placed these stone callers up here. And he just happened to place a missile on the side as well. At the exact same time, bro. Now, I know that he knows that I have a field recovery beacon, and I've been spamming that every round over here to move all my guys over to this side, right? And start shifting uh, acolytes over here and what have you, blah, 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 blah. Start to recover all of my supply deficit on this side, because all these units were just doing nothing. Now, I'm thinking, all right, bro, does he think I'm going to sell these guys? Like, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. So I mind game a little bit, and I decide to leave them here for another round, you know, hoping that... He's just going to think I'm going to sell them, you know what I'm saying? But we're not. Actually, we're kind of doubling down a little bit uh, on this flank over here. And so I'm just looking to steal some cheeky, cheeky wins. You can see he goes for the Thunderstorm as well. So we are going to get absolutely decimated over here. And there's just not a whole lot we can do about it. Now, he does also drop some goddamn crawlers over here, which is tragic as hell. But it also is what it is. Missile goes down too. Oh no, he doesn't place crawlers here. What the hell was that UI bug? Oh, okay, he moved him over here last possible second. Move him over here last possible second. So we actually do get the kill off his uh, blah, blah, blah over here, which is great. However, I think his lightning storm makes it so that we just really can't win this. We just killed too much of our stuff, and uh, that is what it is. Um, why the hell did his crawlers appear over here, bro? For so long until the round we got. Whatever, dude. The replay could be a little bit buggy sometimes, I suppose. Um, and yeah, kind of a close-ish round. But like I said, we're just trying to survive right now, right? Oh my god, these storm callers are just gonna take forever to perish by the looks. So we speed up a wee bit. These guys die. It's very, very tragic. But you know what? If we didn't have these guys over here killing the building, then um, we'd have lost that round even more steeply. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's fine. So at this point, I'm eyeing up the amplifying core. Why am I eyeing up the amplifying core? Well, I'm thinking, you know, I'm playing aerial specialist. Um, I could double down on the Phoenixes a little bit. Or I could go into the Overlord um, and just pick up an Overlord for one round. I think it's fine. Um, and that's why I pick up the Amplifying Core. Yeah. It's just really, really hard for his Mustangs to kill off with the Amp Core as well. So that's what we're going to be doing over here in just a second. And I do start to sell off. You can see there's already one unit of Storm Callers over here now that we've sold off. I'm thinking, all right, dude, I've just flanked him. Is he going to try something on me now? So I slam a precautionary missile down. Uh, sort of over here um, and just had to fatten out my chaff lines a little bit because he is showing a propensity to flank over here now as well I'm thinking all right is he going to double down on this probably wise to get a little bit more chaff over here um, and just place a precautionary missile here pretty much every round so that is what we're going to do okay now it looks like he actually is going to place crawlers over here oh yeah okay so he does finally do this yeah he commits pretty hard to shutting down this flank now which is fine we annoyed him enough into, you know, making him spend 300 supply over here. So that's totally fine by me, man. That's totally good. And we're getting to a point now where I'm starting to focus more and more levels into the Acolytes. Most of them are level 2 at this point. Um, and my hope is, is that, well, I, I was really hoping the building would live for one, but it doesn't go down like that. I was really hoping that the Overlord could get us a win this round and kill off the Sledges before they could take out the building. I guess I was overestimating the power of the Amplifying Core on it just a little bit. That's how the building goes down. We are going to drop this round as well. So that sucks a little. Maybe I should just build more phoenixes there, man. And just like screwed off the uh, overlord completely. Was it that necessary? Do we get that much value out of the amp core? I don't know. Probably not, right? Um, I think I end up looking into skill specialist here. Just because I have two very, very powerful skills unlocked with the incendiary and the lightning storm. And so I'm pretty sure that's what I pick up in this situation. And now that that is sorted, we go ahead and drop a happy extra little incendiary bomb right there. Another missile here. I don't want to let him get away with this. Yeah, I don't want to let him like suddenly spam my flank or something like that or 
or drop something here like a, I don't know a self-destructing rhino that's gonna get to rush in or something something crazy I don't know we sold all of our crap over here now as well and at this point I actually invest in upgrading this building with uh, fortification just a little bit just a little bit because I am really just not defending this side anymore I'm not probing the side anymore I don't want it to die too quickly Cautionary missile here as well to take the tanks out. Hopefully just buy ourselves a little bit more time uh, on this side. I don't know if people don't like the building fortifications, but I think that if your opponent isn't running something like steel balls, that's just going to annihilate your building super quick, no matter what health it has. I think that it does have its place from time to time. I think that it's okay. So, anyways, you can see that now it being round six, he has some very, very highly leveled sledgehammers. I finally go ahead and pull the trigger on charge shot on these acolytes and so now i am not relying on the phoenixes at all anymore we got him to buy a couple of units of mustangs with the phoenixes and while these guys are doing a pretty damn good job at taking these nerds out it's really all about the acolytes now right it's all about the acolytes they're doing an awesome job at clear they're, they're at least doing as much as the phoenixes uh for clearing up the sledgehammers man so they're really starting to come online now you know um and I'm pretty damn pleased about that, because we actually finally able to pick up our first round win. Now, I know that Incendiary Bomb helped out a lot with that, so it wasn't all the Arclights. But you can see that they're starting to come online now. You can see that they're starting to really contend with these Sledgehammers in a way that they just couldn't without those uh, tech upgrades. And of course, they're still damn really useful against the Crawlers as well. Now, I like picking a Missile Strike, particularly when an opponent has super far back Stangs like this. Just drop a missile strike there. People very, very rarely are going to drop a barrier to cover their backline stangs, you know. Um, it just don't happen all that often, man. So I like to drop the missile there, get guaranteed value. It's free. Um, yeah, I really like it a lot. So again, I'm focusing all upgrades on the Arkies. These guys level three now. So they're really starting to do ridiculous damage. 3,100 damage per shot. How much health do his level two tanks have? So they can almost two shot level two sledgehammers at this point. Level 3 ones, yeah, they're going to take a little bit while longer to bring down, but that's okay. Um, and if we eventually pick up Elite Maxman as well, yeah, they'll pretty much be able to two-shot uh, Sledgies with that bonus damage and that bonus range. So, they really come online in a huge way, man. Um, of course, the next thing I should mention as well, this is something that I suck at so badly, because I'm just looking for videos, right? When I play Mecha Bell, bro, I'm just looking for like, okay, what meme can I show the guys next? <laughs> That's like my motivation for most most of the games we play, you know. I actually forget to move this Phoenix, by the way. Spoilers, it's going to stay right there. It's so bad. Oh my god, bro. Um, but yeah. All inning on a unit like this. Like, I could just, like, mass recruit and spam back like, three Acolytes every turn now. And, like, yeah. Cool story. Like, it might work, it might not. You're better off diversifying, right? Um, this guy's already started going into melting points. I'm thinking, okay. If you start spamming melting points with range now... Um, the Phoenixes are going to do a pretty damn good... I mean, Phoenixes have 6.5k damage, even at just level 2. So, when it comes to killing giant units, you can't really beat things like uh, Phoenixes or those melting points of your own. But in this case, we're, we, we, we're just going to bulk out our Phoenix units, man. They're doing great against the Sledgies. They're going to do great as well against the melting point. As you can see, they just kind of annihilate them. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty much the game, bro. The game is... Just alternating between Acolytes and Phoenixes at this point. Acolytes, Phoenixes, Acolytes, Phoenixes. Um, and at this stage, I think we end things with a huge bang, right? Yeah. Orbital Bombardment becomes available. I'm like, okay, dude, is there any merit to the hacker? Can I get the hacker in range to hack the sledgies? They're very vulnerable to that. Um, what about the melting point? Nope. Spoilers, there you go, man. There's the Orbital Bombard. I'm thinking, bro, I can drop an Orbital Bombard and the Lightning Storm, dude, and just absolutely mulch everything he's got and just to assure victory i'm pretty sure yeah because i noticed he sold his crawlers up here too um i noticed he sold his crawlers up here so i'm thinking all right bro maybe it's time to strike once again on the flank you know give this guy like three four things to think about uh three four things that he's got to cover against if he wants any chance of winning this you know so i still have a lot of supply left myself um Go ahead, drop an extra couple of phoenixes, and I'm going to use those to flank, because obviously the sledgehammers can't answer these guys. And I'm spreading them out in such a way, trying to get it so that once they spawn in, they're more likely to... The sledgehammers are more likely to be out of range, and they're likely to kill the command center quite quickly. I'm also spreading them out a bit so that they don't die to missiles. So unless this guy places, like, 
two, three missiles up here to really cover everything, then they should get their intended value. And now I am um, just spamming parries of my own. Oh yeah, I also did see that his, um, that his orbital bombard, I guess, was available this round. So I'm thinking, okay, a lot of these phoenixes are just going to die because they're above the barrier, right? When they take off and they fly, they're actually above the barrier so they can die to the bombard. And that's actually why I, like, I remember now, um, I didn't want to invest too much more in this area in terms of phoenixes. Just wouldn't have made a lot of sense. So I dealt them over here instead. Otherwise, they just sort of die to the bombard, man. Oh my god. Oh my god, this is worth, like, some cinematic action. These wasps get mulched by the fangs. First time that chef has got value all game. Very good, dude. His building goes down over there. Thanks to the double phoenix flank at the back. Which you can just as soon make out. There it is, bro. Cool. Yeah, and you know what? I suppose actually going into the Overlord was fine. Because I was aerial specialist. It cost me like, what, 400 supply? That was it. I didn't spend really jack on it after that. Um, and it sort of made him going into a, go into a melting point. Which cost him 200 more supply than my Overlord did, you know? So it actually worked out pretty damn good, I suppose. Um, he actually went for plus range as well, so... Dude, he invested a lot of supplies into this melting point. Frightful of what my Overlord might do if I go, like, uh, much, much more heavily into Overlords. I just was never really planning to do that, you know? We just dropped it because, well, it was good against the Sledgies, and I was never really planning on investing more in that. I was already pretty happily invested in the Phoenixes and the Akis, man. So, yeah, that's the video, man. Hope you all did enjoy. Um... And that's all I got, really. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I shall catch all of you guys just a tad bit later.